another week, another batch of AI use cases that you could be putting to work today. So there's a lot to talk about here because we got things like an open source GPT store. Then I found multiple ways to actually improve your prompting skills in an interactive manner. That should be interesting for anybody trying to become better with these tools. There's some new open source tools that you can use or build into your apps. And we've seen some major players integrate some of the translation apps that we've seen over the course of the last weeks into their very own ecosystem, namely Roblox introducing a feature where you can translate between multiple languages so people can play the game and use their native language to speak to each other and it just translates it fluently so we'll cover all that but first things first let's start with google labs because this is the umbrella term that google puts a lot of their ai experiments under and i would say this not a single one of these is completely groundbreaking or game changing but all of these are fun experiments that have something novel to them that is worth talking about so let's dive into some of these and i would just say this is a fantastic site to explore as you can see there's a multitude of tools on here and we've talked about some of these right? Google's music effects or their image effects. These are great. And also the AI powered search can be explored here and notebook LM we covered multiple weeks ago. Remember how I really liked how it suggested the new prompts? Well, this is the type of experimental feature that Google Apps is all about. So now you can go in here and explore these. And what I really like is that they're taking this experimental approach to some of these interfaces. They usually look the same way, right? It's like a hugging face space with a Grado interface or just a blank interface with one text input like ChatGPT. So look, this is very simple. You just sign in with Google and you can start using some of these. And there's one tricky part to this. It's not available all around the world. So you might need a VPN if you want to try this out. I'm personally using one that tells the browser I'm in the US. So that's the way to make it work. But once you do that, you can just log in with your Google account, accept this. And after confirming that this is an experimental technology, I mean, the site is literally called AI Test Kitchen. So what do you expect? Breakfast you get into this interface. So here is text effects. And this is the thing that I said, none of these are completely revolutionary, but they're interesting and they're very different. So let's just put in the word advantage here. And then you can do very interesting things like alliteration, or you can use a phrase using the letters of a given word. So let's just say AIA with a temperature setting of 0.7. Again, this could be roughly equated to creativity. So if you put this really high, it's going to be super creative. If you put it at zero, you're always going to get the same type of results. And then here you get some AIA acronyms. Or what about explode AI advantage. And look, the reason I say none of this is completely revolutionary is because you could do these things inside of GPT-4 and we talked about many of them before, but it's just really nice to have an interface like this. And to be honest, some of these I haven't even tried in chat GPT. So look at that, we exploded AI advantage. I advantage, I am the advantage. That's actually quite smart. Or Fuse can find similarities between unrelated things. Wait a minute, I'm having a bit too much fun here. What about a cat and a hat? Both a cat and a hat can be both a source of comfort and a source of annoyance. Is this a cat in a hat? So as you can see, there's many more, but this is a great tool that you could play with. And there's so many use cases here, right? Use this for communication, for branding, for marketing purposes. Heck, some of these are super witty. You could use it to power your next presentation. Maybe this is going to provide you with the extra spice that's going to make it stand out. So there you go, that's text effects. Now we have the same thing also for images and music. And with the same thing, I mean the same type of experimental interface. And music effects and text effects are very similar here in the sense that you have this prompt suggestion type of interface, which I already really liked with Notebook LLM when we talked about that. So this randomly generated prompt created polyrhythmic jazz, but now I can just go in here and with this drop down, it shows me the alternative. So we can create polyrhythmic hip hop. <laughs> Oh God, please make that go away. So polyrhythmic music just by its very nature is a bit annoying, but you get the point here. And look, this is exactly what people mean when they say that prompt engineering doesn't really have a future because apps are going to build in interfaces like this where you're going to have drop downs and where it's going to be really easy to change the outputs. It's going to be way more intuitive than having to go for trial and error and just being aware of all the options here. It's just going to suggest them. And it's the same thing for the image generation here, right? So let's just return to the classic that we always test in these models. And look, the model here is definitely not best in class, but again, it's this interesting interface that differentiates it because you could just go into this drop down and say a cat with a crown. Then you have these suggestions at the bottoms, a setting tab where you can lock the seed. So it's going to use the seed of this image over and over again. So no matter how I change it, they're going to see that it sticks to this original design and just vary some variables in it rather than regenerating the whole thing from the ground up. Again, these are things that you can do in Stable Diffusion in Midjourney, but here it's way more intuitive because I would argue that this interface is just better. So to round the segment out, there's a few more here. We talked about Notebook LM already. It's just a way of taking notes and then talking to each other. That is really good. You have Bart extensions, which we also covered. Duet AI, which is essentially co-pilot for Google Sheets, Docs, and Mails. 
Help Me script, which is like their competition to GitHub Copilot. And one last one, which I want to highlight a bit, and this is their Google Arts and Culture experiment. And I would encourage everybody to try this because this is an interactive challenge on how to learn prompting. And look at this cute little interface. You can just start level one. And what you do here is you get images and then you need to guess the prompt. And then it's going to judge you based on how close you got to it. So basically this is a fantastic prompt training. And for this, you actually won't need a VPN. This just works everywhere. So let's give this a quick shot. Hmm, let's see how close we got. 82%. So so it's not the top-down view, but it kind of works. So as you can see, you can challenge yourself here and maybe even play against some friends, see how close you get. Really fun little apps and all of this is free as they're experimenting and they want you to participate. Oh, and by the way, you can do this. <laughs> so. so yeah, I guess that alone is worth checking out the website for. Okay, so I wanna take a moment here to talk about something that really matters to me. And that is the concept of lifelong learning. It really is the essence of what we do here on this channel constantly learning new tools and techniques and staying up to date on the latest tech innovations. And for me, there's no better way to learn than to roll up my sleeves and dive right in and explore myself. And if you're watching this, chances are you are the same way. At the very least, you're interested in what it can do for you and your life. And that's why I'm happy to say that today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Brilliant. They are an online interactive learning platform that helps you build your expertise in AI, programming, data analysis, and much more. They have thousands of interactive lessons available already, but what I really like about them is that they keep adding more like lessons on large language models or content creation. All of these are important skills that traditional institutions like universities are usually too slow to adapt to. I know this from my own studies. When I went to university, by the time I was graduating, a lot of the stuff we covered, even though the professors tried to keep it up to date, was already out of date. And that's why learning platforms like Brilliant keep you up to date and help you build the skills you might need to forward your career. So as you know, we're all about the use cases on this channel. How can you actually put this stuff to work today, right? And one thing that I really like about Brilliant's courses is the case studies that I include. For example, one course called Introduction to Probability includes a case study called Going Viral on X. It walks you through how to leverage probability, exploring how posts go viral on X, aka Twitter. It even teaches you which posts are real and which ones are probably fake. And when you sign up to Brilliant, it runs you through a little quiz that gauges your interest to recommend the right topics to learn about. So here's the deal. Head on over to brilliant.org slash the AI advantage, and you can start your learning journey for free for a full 30 days. And once you're done with the free month, for our viewers, we have a special offer. The first 200 people to sign up with them get 20% off the annual subscription. You can find the link in the description of this video. And now let's get back to talking about this week's use cases. All right, next up, we have a brand new video generation model. And I know there's a lot of these, but this one comes out of China and it does one thing well that the others don't, and that is dynamic movement. Okay, so as you can see in this very impressive demo video as they usually are and by that i mean they're usually very well cherry picked but as you can see stuff like liquid or these falling flower petals and these fireworks they just animate well okay so how does this work well it's actually quite simple as you can see here in their paper they take an image they run it through the dual stream image injection then run it through the query transformer into the denoising unit the data from the bedding layer and the clip text encoder goes into that then it gets run for another formula the conditions and out you get a video file huh Okay, so how about we just skip this part and look at how it performs in practice. So what I'm going to do is test its ability to animate flowing fluids. And for that, we'll take this beautiful image from iStock of a teapot pouring a coffee. I'm going to run it through the replicate space that I linked in the description below. And what the heck is this? Doesn't look much like the demo, does it? So I don't know, this cost me eight cents to create. I don't want to talk about it, so let's just move on. Oh, by the way, I kept the most interesting and kind of revolutionary use case for last in this video. So stick around to get all the details on that. Next up, another hugging face space. This one is called Bria RMBG, like background removal. And this is actually promising because it's open source. You're not allowed to use this for commercial purposes, but it is open source and it removes image backgrounds. So here they have their example image with these two giraffes, but we're going to try this ourselves, okay? So this is a hugging face space, completely free to use. And we've been playing more with Midjourney V6. And this is kind of a tricky image to give it. But let's just try it. Let's submit this and let's see how it goes. Okay, actually not bad. This is kind of usable on the right side. So like certainly not perfect. But to be fair, that was an extremely tricky image. Let's take something simpler. How about this one? Okay, I'm impressed. This is really good. This is what I thought. So yeah, this seems to work really well. You can just download the image and use it. Open source and free, just how we like it. Now, moving on to the next use case. This is not one we'll actually be demoing here because mm, let's be real, I'm a grown man. I am a man. And I don't play Roblox regularly. And just for this demo, I won't start. If there's more AI stuff, I might just do it because they seem to be big on this type of thing. But I just wanted to bring this to your attention because they're doing something that I pointed out in previous episodes, which is using some of these translation capabilities of AI inside of their game. So if you're not familiar, Roblox is a massively popular computer game for young demographics. 
And by massively popular, I mean they have 70 million daily active users, okay? That's daily active users. That's people who logged in today. And the problem is this spans across the world, right? So people from mainland China are not going to be able to talk to Americans. Or that will be the default, right? But now with the power of AI, they implemented live translation in the chat. So if you type something in Cantonese or Spanish, it's just going to translate it to your language and it's going to do the same for the other player. So this is for written text right now. But they said in this blog post that they're already exploring automatic voice chat translation. Imagine a French speaker on Roblox being able to voice chat with someone who only speaks Russian. I think we have a Russian in our team. Hello? <laughs> now, this is incredible. Think about this. These computer games and all of the internet are just going to become multilingual. Now, look, as somebody who speaks multiple languages, I have to say there's a lot to a language that just cannot be translated. And I'm not just talking about certain phrases or words that don't translate well, but also cultural nuances that just come with the language. <laughs> There's a certain humor that works in German. That's not going to work in English, no matter what you do. Das gibt's in it, ich glaube ich bin. The translation would be, that's unbelievable. I think I spider. Or I think I'm going crazy. The closest translation to that would be, wow, that's crazy. But it's not really it. There's like a layer of disbelief that cannot be communicated in words. But anyway, now you have this translation in the chat. I expect this to come to most computer games and other applications. So yeah, the internet is going to change a lot with the power of AI over the coming months and years. I expect this to be more widely integrated integrated soon, including voice as Meta is open sourcing models for that left and right. Okay, moving on to a nifty little app that I want to bring your attention towards. And this is as simple as it could be, but it's a chat GPT prompting helper. Okay, and we talked about prompting a lot. I kind of stopped over time because I feel like I covered all the bases, at least when it comes to the beginner levels. But once you graduate past the beginner levels, you get to extending prompts and getting specific things done. And in that case, I always teach via building block system. You notice if you took the course or if you watch some of my more advanced videos on this channel. By the way, there's still very up to date, I have an entire chat GPT playlist with all my personal favorites. And although the interface changed, although we have GPTs now, nothing changed the way about we prompt these LLMs. And it's universal, it's not just for chat GPT, it's also for BART and any other competitors. So just be aware, they're out there, you can watch the videos for free anytime. But my point is that I teach this building blocks approach where you decompose the prompt into its different parts. So which part is the instructions? Which part is the context? And then I break down the context into multiple parts. So part of the context is what role you're taking? What is your goal? The task is your instructions. So this does it really well. And it's a fantastic base template to get started with building more advanced prompts. And it really helps you here. So look, you can just click this and pick something from a drop down. This is very similar to what we saw out of Google Labs. So yeah, let's take an ethical hacker and I need a shopping list for healthy food. You will recommend, I'll leave the details empty. No negative prompt. And I just want plain text as the format with no examples. There you go. I can just copy the prompt, go on over to ChatGPT, paste it, and I just crafted a pretty solid prompt to get started with. This is really great for beginners as it shows you many of the options. This is what I did in the course too. I gave every participant a database of different building blocks that they can pick from so they can mix and match their prompts. Here it's simplified even more and you just have this free website where you can do this. So now you're aware of it, have fun prompting. Moving on to the next one. This is a very interesting app, okay? So this is basically a workflow builder for image alterations with AI capabilities, okay? And by the way, this is not sponsored. No segment where it's not explicitly mentioned that it's a sponsored is sponsored. I just find these super interesting. So what you can do here is you can build a workflow and some of the more advanced viewers will immediately recognize that this looks very much like Comfy UI. And that's because this is essentially Comfy UI, which is a workspace where you can build AI image and video generation workflows and do things like this, but you have way more customizability and it's way more complicated too. Yes, you can load pre set workflows, but most people just shy away from it because you have to install it through the terminal. Yes, there's this thing called Pinocchio computer where it's a one click installer, but still there's just more options, more menus. It's quite deep. There's a bit of a learning curve in the beginning and I understand why most people shy away from it. But then they're missing out on the powers of a node place workflow and here for free you can just log in right now and you can start dealing with images in this workflow fashion. So look, I can zoom out. Here's my image input. Here's my output. One thing I'll say is that their image generation right now, I'm not exactly sure which model they use. It's just not very good at all. So I would recommend this to alter the existing images that you have. That's why the default preset is also with image input and output. And the cool thing here is I can put anything in between the input and the output. Okay. So 
could change the saturation. Pretty basic, right? But then there's these AI blocks where I can remove the background. I could upscale the image resolution, right? And a bunch more. So they're just getting started here, but this is pretty great because you can just drag these into each other. And let's see how this does with the remove background and the saturation change here. We're gonna go back to the image where we removed the background beforehand and see how this compares. I'm gonna bump the saturation by 50% and remove the background and hit play. And there you go, it cuts it out super well. So you have increased saturation, you have the removed background and I can just download it. I didn't even sign up with a credit card or anything like that. Wow. Now, the ones that you might want to play with are the generative in-painting and the image cleanup based on a mask. So you can generate masks and then bring the masks into here and clean up the image in that manner. This way you can create custom workflows. And that brings me to the final question. And that is, when would you want to use this? Isn't it just easier to load up Photoshop or Canva or something like that and just remove the background? Well, it depends if that's your only step. Sure. Maybe if you just want to change the saturation, and remove the background, it might also be easier. But what if you want to do that with five images? Well, this starts getting better. What if you want to do this with 30 images. This is way better. And that's where this shines. This is really great when you want to process multiple images or you have a brand and you always kind of apply the same edits to your images. You can build a workflow and then every time you just bring in a new image into it and it just applies all the same settings to them. All you have to do is click play. So pretty cool little app. I'm going to keep my eye on this. This looks promising as it's very user friendly. And once they give us choices for the different LLMs and image generators that it's using for text generation on top and the image generation, that's where this is going to become really powerful powerful very fast. Okay, so last but certainly not least, as I previously mentioned, we have a very exciting release here, at least for me personally, and that is an open source, completely free GPT store. This meme captures what happened perfectly. And what you got to do is go to huggingface.co slash chat slash assistance. As per usual, all these links can be found in the description below. But what this is, is an open source and free GPT store. So there's barely 200 of them in here, which is not a lot compared to all the GPTs that have been built in a GPT store. But wait a minute, there's some advantages here. So obviously these are not based on GPT-4, but on other models like Mixtral or Llama 70B or Code Llama or OpenChat 3.5. So you can create some of these yourself, just like so. Upload an avatar, give it a name, description, pick the model, pick your preset prompts and give it instructions. So essentially this is very similar to the GPT store, minus the knowledge base and the actions. But also they just launched on February the 5th, right? So this is just getting started, but I really like this concept. And there's a few interesting things here to check out. So if I find enough interesting chatbots in here, I will create a dedicated video on this. But for now, I wanna show you what I found. One part is that if you start chatting to one of these and you go to settings, you will find all of the system instructions open sourced like so. So you can just copy them and they're freely available. They didn't even tend to protect them. If you upload your GPT here, your instructions are going to be out there. Now, this is great for research because you have almost 200 chatbots that people built and the instructions are in the open. A great opportunity to learn and take building blocks from it to enhance your own GPTs, aka assistants, aka chatbots whatever you want to call it. Now, here's another interesting thing I found. Apparently, all these conversations are shared with the developers. So be careful with what you put in. This is very useful for the builders of the chatbots, right? But every message you send will actually go to the creator of the bot. This is on by default. So watch out for that. I think it's fine. It's just something to be aware of. So one downside is you don't get sorties at all. You just kind of get what you get right here. So I would love to sort these by most popular or at least A to Z, not possible right now. All we can do is just filter by the different models, which is useful if you want a coding assistant, you're just gonna filter for Code Llama 70B. Other than that, I'll be diving into some of these, but as you can see, this is already very useful because you could just go in, look at the instructions and learn from this. Some of these are quite good. And I only expect this to get better over time as more people learn about this, more people contribute, more people use this. I love this idea. I'm all for a closed app store, but I also think that competition is good and people should have the freedom to build on different models and freely provide their chatbots if they want to. And if you made it this far, I want to show you the chatbot presets that I created myself that I'm giving away for free and they're packaged inside of this Notion template. And if you just go down here, there's 10 chat GPT assistants and these are custom instructions that will help you build personalized chatbots. Just go over to GPTs and you have the instructions in here. Each one of them includes 30 matching prompts and so much more, everything you need to get started. Plus I include this entire template with prompts, follow up prompts and my personal prompt database that I still use to this date to organize all of my prompts. So you can get all of this for free by signing up to my weekly newsletter. And if you want to learn about more AI use cases, just like I showed you in this video, we do this show weekly, subscribe or check out the playlist to see all of the previous videos. Because one thing is for sure, all of these apps are as bad as they will ever be. And I personally can't wait to see the future where we are able to translate languages and use customized chatbots to enhance our lives. All right, that's all I got for today. See you in the next one.